Welcome to the industry. Um, it's our first time at Condé Nast College, so big thanks to Condé Nast College. And we're very excited to have David Gandhi with us. Thank you. And Hillary Alexander is going to be conducting the interview. I'm going to hand it over to Hillary and David. Thank you very much, Courtney. Um, hello, everybody. My name's Hillary. Um, and this is David. And I guess you could say I'm, I'm sitting in the hot seat. A successful model must build a brand. And I think this is probably the secret of your success. How did you do it, or how did you set about doing it? Well, I've been in the business for 13 years, um, and I, I don't think it's typically necessary to build a brand. I don't think a, a really another male model has done it. The female models have done it, the, the supermodels. Mm. And, and, and the females have been uh, sort of my inspiration. You know, they, they, they had a team, they had uh, strategy, branding, everything. When it sort of came to light blue, and, and, and we were very fortunate to to uh, sort of obviously sort of it, it, it sort of you know, grabbed the imagination of everyone and it went very, very well. Um, and then we could see we had something to work with. Um, but we wanted to expand on that and, and that, we were, that was kind of through branding. Other models might work sort of, I suppose, from, from year to year. And we always had sort of a three-year plan. Right. Where do we want to be this year? Where do we want to be in three years? Um, and and, and we, 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 we have got there and you constantly move those boundaries. You succeed on there, you move that boundary up again. You succeed there, you move it again. Um, and we're very fortunate that it's all worked out. What I find quite intriguing is that you've been able to do that alongside Marks and Spencer, for example. What I try to be with, with all of my brands, which I don't think many models do enough, no. is, 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 is show a lot of loyalty. Um, so a lot of models sort of coming and they're, and they're sort of like the in thing and they go off and do absolutely sort of every brand available and then, unless they're made exclusive. Right. Now, I wasn't made exclusive, first of all, with Dolce Gabbani, but, uh, but I was, um, I purposely didn't sort of go off and do Armani or Valentino or, or any of those things. I stuck with Dolce Gabbana and the loyalty sort of paid off with, it, with it doing the campaign and then we went on to do the book and the calendar and the underwear and, and we still had that sort of relationship you know, to, to, together. And then it sort of moves on. And I've always said, it's what you say no to, it's not what you say yes to. Yeah. So all along we've said no to all these other brands, and people thought I was crazy for doing that, and then Select were like, no, 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 and the sort of, uh, you know, that, was, that was the plan, to keep it very high fashion, very exclusive, very luxury. And M&S always wanted to shoot with me, they wanted to shoot me for years, and we said, no, we'd, if you want to shoot with, with David, we have to put something together, we have to put a package together, we want to work together, not right. just do one shoot and that's it, we want to, and that's what they did after, after sort of so many years, of sort of five, six years, we then work together. And that's what I like to do with, with, with everything, with all the brands I, I work with now, is we work with them. So yeah, well, we do keep them together, but, 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 but m and I'm, I'm so very proud to be British, and, and m and is almost an institution. And uh, I don't think anyone wants to see m and fail. Mm. And uh, we were sort of working more and more closely together. So men are taking more interest in their personal style, you sort of said that, and also sort of the preponderance of information now available to men about fashion and style is, is evident of, of that. Would you say that role models are increasingly important for men in fashion, thinking of industries such as sport, where for men, role models, they're very influential? The role models thing is interesting. I'm not ever sure you're going to inspire, people are going to aspire to be in fashion as much as they are with, with sport. Hmm. Um, but you, know, you could sort of say with style and, uh, and everything else, you know, it, it's, it's something I've had an argument, not an argument, a discussion with, with magazines before where you know, women um, will have magazines and they'll, they'll say everyone sort of on the front row or uh, on and the, red, you know, the red carpet and, and out on the street, um, celebrities you know, will take the pictures and, then you, and they're, they're told where to get those in, in a cheaper way of sort of doing those outfits, yeah. um, which I think would be a brilliant idea for, for someone to do for men. Yeah. Um, oh, you. And, and, <laughs> and, and uh, an editor of a magazine said, no, I don't think there's any space for that for men. But I think what I've always tried to do for, with men is simplifying it. Mm. Um, so we, if you're looking at somebody, if you're interesting style and you've got, you know, you've got a role model, your inspiration is, it could be Jude mm. Law, it could be Dave Beck, it could be yeah. uh, Ryan Gosling, whatever. How do they do that? You know, and that's what needs to be explained all the time. And it's simplifying that fact. As I said earlier with a personal stylist, they want to go into one store one time 
um, and have someone virtually almost do it for them. Okay, that's going to be it for questions. So big thanks to David and Hillary.